Right, welcome back to today's video, which is from Hollywell Golf Club, and I've got head professional Lewis Johnson, who's going to demonstrate, uh, well, what we call it, five pretty basic chip shots, I suppose, but uh, with five different golf clubs, and all from five very different situations, I suppose. Yep. Where are we start, Lou? Let's just get straight stuck in. Yep. So we're just going to start with the one the the most difficult of the the basic, if you like, the one that's got to carry all the way. Okay. So we've got quite a unique setup here on the floor. 14th, haven't we? So first of all, club choice? High lofted wedge. Okay. We'll start off with that one and then we'll get different scenarios and, and a little bit easier. And what, 50 yards? Yeah, 50 yards. We've got to carry it sort of probably 40, 45. And, yeah. You know, this is the one that people are going to find the most, the most difficult. difficult. Just going to give a you know, little tip here and then we'll go five different. Go for five it. Different let's five let, different let's tips. work so your magic. I think the, the key with this one is people always want to play them very rigidly. Um, you know, keep everything sort of straight and locked. And hmm. with this one, no, we've got to get a load of hinge in. Um, we can't hit it miles, but we've got to create some speed to get some some sort of launch on it. So high lofted wedge. I, I would probably open up a, a little bit just to give myself a little bit more leeway, using a little bit more bounce. Um, and then you know, ball position. I'm not changing too much. You know, nice and nice and easy. But the big key with this is I'm going to hinge on the way back. And as I'm coming down, I'm going to hinge on the way through. Okay. Okay. So we're going to create that descending blow, and then we're going to go this way, um, holding the loft on it, and, and we're going to try and create some. Okay. Some Super. launch. Okay. So a little bit like this. Nice. Superb. So there you go, that's the first shot. It's probably the one, if you're thinking about a chip shot, that's probably the one you're expecting to see. But I know the other four are quite different and some of the clubs are quite different as well. So on to scenario number two, which is gonna be on the same green, a little bit closer down in that bowl. Right, so we just moved a little bit further forward. We've still got probably 35 yards to carry, and that means going up the slope and onto the second tier. So what sort of club have you got in on there? That's, a, that's an iron, but what iron? So it's nine iron. Okay. So it's a 35 yard shot, 40 yard shot, as you say, um, but we're not gonna carry it in this instance. Okay. We're just gonna decide to just um, carry it sort of five yards in front of us and let it run out. Okay. Um, we want to go up the tier. We're just going to take, we want it to run out like a putt, but we can't hit a putter that hard. You know, it's just too far. There's a, there's an uphill tier. And um, so this shot can be played in a, in a couple of different ways and um, with a couple of different clubs, but I go for nine iron because people always want to sort of, it's, it's sort of your traditional chip and run. Yes. But they're always too keen to go for sort of six or seven iron. Okay. Is I like the chip and run with a bit of loft. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, a little bit more carry and then it's gonna roll out. Okay. Really, once you get away from your traditional wedges, you're gonna get a lot of roll out. So even if it's just your normal pitching wedge, you know, we're gonna go for nine iron here. And it, it sort of, the big key for this is I would, if you're playing the chip and run, I would go for more loft on the club and then I would drop it slightly back. I would, Backwards. I would, drop, okay. you know, I wouldn't the old weight forward and all. I would just stand nice sort of 50, 50 weight ball in sort of the back half of the stance yeah. and just get them weight. So you're neutral in the weight, but you are getting the hands a little forward and then it's just a sort of a long putting stroke. Nice. And you're going to yeah. carry it and it's just going to roll up the tier and you'd be amazed how much that runs out. You know, it's a nine yeah, iron, yeah, so yeah. you really don't want the, the, the sort of, I don't like the seven iron, I much prefer the nine iron. So. Yeah, and the idea again, again, speaking from an average golfer's perspective is when we've gone from shot A, which is requiring a lot cleaner strike, I suppose, that chip yeah. shot that you played and, and put it all in the air. This again, a lot more room for error. So I love the idea of second option with a chip shot being with a nine iron. Right, the next situation is we're at the back of the green, we've run through, we've got very much a downward, well, a downward lie and then and then downhill to the flag. That's it. So I'm interested to know what your choice is because it's a bit of a surprise. Yes, yeah, so we get that a lot where you run through the green and you, you've sort of hit the upslope at the back. So when the slope's this way and, and you're going back, it's quite hard to create that sort of descending blow okay. to get the ball in the air without creating too much force where it just runs Jeez off the green off. and down. So. Um, and again, because the slope is like this, it's quite hard to get putter on it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and obviously putter with, with so little loft, yeah. you're gonna start sort of, you know, presenting negative loft and hit it into the floor. Yeah, and makes you just sense. Thought, oh, so what we wanna do is try and use that more putting stroke method, mm -hmm. um, but something that's gonna accommodate us. So we're gonna go hybrid. Okay. So any sort of loft of hybrid, you know, three hybrids gonna have 19, 20 degrees of loft, that's enough, but it's got a longer shaft on. So we, we're just gonna go for a, we've got a five hybrid here, but a four hybrid will be fine. Um, and we're just gonna, 
you know, I think a lot of people should practice this shot. Yeah. It's a massively, you know, because like I say, they want to take the putter out, but they don't know what's happening. And when you're coming this way, you're going to sort of run into a bit of trouble. Um, I think you know, the fringe grass is a little longer. Yeah, and I think it's getting used to how fire, how quick it fires off the face, isn't it? When That's the one. Hybrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, people when they see this, they, they don't want to move it like a putter. Yeah. Um, and if they do, they'd be amazed that it'll just, it comes out so nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, have a go around the chipping green before you go out and play. Yeah. And it's such a nice, uh, such a nice shot. Yeah, yeah. And control it. Um, but Let just going into away. the, just going into how, uh, sort of, how I would play it. Hmm. Um, I would try and get, you know, people want to stand as if they're hitting a full yeah. hybrid shot. It, you know, really is. You want to go down on the grip as close as we can to it. And really, you're going to sort of maybe go a little bit toe down okay. on it. Um, you'll try and make the the, the, the shorts playing a little bit more vertical there. So it's going to be a little bit back and two. And just put a putting stroke on it. It's just going to create a little bit of lift, nice and soft. Nice. You're going to get that sort of hybrid tingy yeah, yeah. sort of yeah. feel to it. And just going to run out. Um, Again, I think you should really go with that. I really good really like that. You want me to have a go? I think you'd really like that. Let's have a go. I can't imagine you'd uh, yeah. you played this too often. I, I no, to be honest with you, mate. I, a little I, bit closer I, down the grip. I often say like a, a versatility of a hybrid is is good to have in the bag for this kind of shot. So it's uh, it's something I would be comfortable playing. Maybe not when I'm just called upon now, but to follow that. But here we go. Very good. Be nice if it went in, Lou. Be nice Lovely. if it went in, it just needed this in, but again, a really good example of kind of simplifying the game, and that's what I like about Lou's instruction full stop, but in this particular sort of lineup, apart from the obvious with the wedge that we started at, you've now seen a nine iron, and now a hybrid option of trying to get that ball as close to the hole in a simpler way as possible. That's three ways of chipping. We now need number four with a different club again. Right, next up, Lou, um, what, 30 yards to the flag, uh, 10 yards worth of fringe, nothing too heavy, but it's, just, it's flat. There is absolutely nothing in the way. Yeah. Zero loft required, I assume. But what are we playing? And what have you got in your hands there? I know what it is. And chipper. That's my favourite. It's chipper. a pink chipper, yay. Yeah. So go on, what's the So we don't have to logic? do anything with the ball. So yeah. all these other scenarios where it's, you know, quirky lie or you know, there's a tear in the green yeah. and we have to carry it or we have to run it up. Uh, so we don't have to do anything here. Yeah. The so pink we don't have to go over there can't do you know don't have to do yeah. anything can't do anything wrong type of i've got to recall i don't know which way these videos are coming out but please give me that quote that we had on a uh, on a previous video that we just uh, filmed only a fool chips over nothing it's just genius isn't it what a saying that is are you going first on me uh i'm gonna do you want there, there are i have to say with this is um you can you can play this out the middle of your stance. Yeah, yeah. There's a few different ways. So <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. Rather than a tip, I, w I would just say the tip here is don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I'm using this. You know, funny enough, there's not one of these in my bag. Yeah. But th this is the type of stuff. Um, don't you know? You don't have to get grab the lob wedge from here. Yeah. You know. No, I um, totally agree. The yeah. interesting thing with me about the ping chipper that I particularly like, and again, when you tell me when you've got it there, is that the lie angle is different than yeah. the sort of standard chippers that I've tried before in the past, yeah. and it sits in a really Really good position again yeah. that you just walk yeah and that's away. one of the one of the main reasons why you know i don't you know i like these a lot of people when i see them chipping with the the, the traditional chipping clubs you know your wedges and and, and so forth they want to stand how they hit a normal golf shot yeah and and i'm like no come on let's get a little yeah. bit closer let's get down the and that makes you do it almost doesn't it yeah absolutely yeah yeah definitely it's quite substantial you know everyone should really go and have a look at yeah and, and put one down shouldn't they yeah but like i would play this up, up, you know sort of 50 50 weight right in the middle of my stance uh, nice and simple don't overcomplicate it too much and then just let it run out. You know, it's it's amazing how easy these are to ha put online. Yeah. You know, you're hitting these straight. Um, no, I agree, and, and it's something that uh, let's lob one down. Have you got a ball there? I, I I said I've said on numerous videos I've hold more. I've hold. I don't don't really hold chips. It's not something I do. Over the years, I'm not talking about recently, and I've hold out more times on video when a camera's running with this thing in hand. It's crazy. a little pull down the left the pace of it was right but again just 
a simple simple yeah, solution yeah. can't do a lot wrong with it the uh, the width of sole again is always a bit of help it sort of yeah. slides along there a yeah. bit stubby my effort and again still got me to pin eye and leaves me a chance of making up and down so i love yeah. option number four love it we've got one more to go bud right this is definitely not a uh, position location that you'll be using the ping chipper no so and a point to mention on the ping chipper before we move any further that makes it that's why it's a little bit one dimensional i suppose in many ways but we've got a situation i assume we've got some loft there lou because that's quite a severe yeah slope in front of us yeah so we've got we're, we're going to be standing on a little bit of an upslope yeah with an immediate you know sort of um lip in front of yeah us, yeah face yeah so just sort of it's not a high lob shot this it, you know it's a very sort of short we're quite close to the green but we've yes. got to get it uh, elevated in um, so it's like a use a medium lofted like you know like a 52 or a 54 or a 50 for, for something like this like a, a gap wedge um and really this is such a common shot and it's yeah. something i see people get wrong all the time is it's such a short shot so everyone just decelerates okay, on it. Okay, yeah. And I think this would be the, the you know, the, the the main sort of tip of this is, um, you know, it's a short shot, so you want to take the club back really short. Okay. Um, because you need that acceleration. That acceleration is going to sort of just pop that ball up and then it's going to release out. Okay. You know, so everyone, everyone's trying to create lift or, you know, decelerate because they're close. Um, I, I would do the complete opposite. I okay. would hit down on it with a short okay. sort of acceleration swing yeah. and it's just going to get that little bit of pop up. Okay. It's going to land less than halfway and then it's going to run okay. out. And I think that's where... And my immediate is thought when you stood there now is, will the club, when through the ball, where does the club face follow? Because I'm immediately thinking, am I going to hit it in here or does it go up the slope? Yeah, I mean, you will, because you're going to, you're going to have to set it right like this. But if, there's, if the slope is a little bit more severe there, yeah. I'd quite happily just let my club go into the slope. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, you know... Um, so it is that little kind of short, stubby shot, is it, where you kind of... Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, and it basically, you know, a lot of greens in golf, they're, they're raised up a little bit. As soon as you miss them, you're below the level of the surface. Off, yeah. And it, a little bit like here, we're below the level of the surface. We're on a bit of an upslope. You don't need your most lofted because we're on a little bit of an upslope. But we're just going to accelerate and just we're just going to let it run out. You, know, you okay. don't have to create any lift in this scenario. We're going to go short. We're going to go down into it with a little acceleration. We're just going to pop it up. Less oh, than halfway. Beautiful. Get it. And we're just going to run it out that's a great way to finish so, and, and that is you know th this is the shot where people oh you make that look so simple you did and it is it really is this is the one that i see messed up more than most i was going to say you make it look so simple but we we average golfers then overcomplicated it and not understand the yeah. right execution i suppose yeah think, definitely that's the one that's going to help people build lost yeah love it Brilliant, Luke. Thanks. I mean, it was good. It was very educational. It was five, like I said, very different scenarios and uh, five different shot types um, that really make a huge difference to your scorecard at the end of the day because, uh, again, the percentage of average golfers that miss the green in reg is huge. And if you can get that short game sharpened up a little, I've no doubt make huge differences to the way we score at the end of the day. So big thanks to Lewis Johnson and Hollywell Golf Club for having us again today. Hope you enjoyed that one. Give me your comments and feedback down below and go out and try those yourself and uh, as ever i'll probably see you tomorrow night